The Aussies, when they first went away, um, Greg Welsh, Brad Bev and Nick Croft, they all went to Europe and um, I went through Japan and then across to America. And the Japanese, there was a group of Japanese sponsors who sponsored the World Cup races in 98 and 99. And um, they also put on the World Championships in, in 91. And uh, they saw me race and decided they wanted to get on board and sponsor me. So I was fortunate enough to get some really good sponsorship from, from 18 years of age, from a very early age. And part of that was obviously to, to go and race in Japan. So... Yeah, I look back now. I've been to Japan forty-one times, so it was an amazing career, an amazing time to go to Japan. That you know, and see that country. And uh, I've raced all over the place, and, and and got a lot of good friends there. Um, I was one of the only people in sport to have a one of the telephone cards in Japan as well, so that was pretty cool. But because uh, I was sponsored by the tele the telephone company NTT, so. Look, it was just the fact that sponsorship was there and they were keen to get me up and do some races in Japan, which which I absolutely loved. And um, you know, that that country always holds a special place in my heart. Is I get a really good feedback. Even when I go there today, people still, you know, talk to me and, and talk about races that were done in the past. So it, it's, a, it's a cool place. Probably early on in my career, I, I just enjoyed the one-off events and, and it was all about going and winning different races. I didn't probably focus too hard in the series. Um, Brad Bevan was a king at the series. And Brad had this unique ability to be able to just go well or go like 95% of his best all the time. My, my skill was probably more coming up for a really big day and having a really good race, but not necessarily doing it back to back to weeks. Um, maybe he was more professional than me, I don't know. But he, um, he had this unique skill set where he could keep going back to back. And I, I didn't probably focus too much on that until about 1996. And I thought I'd actually hadn't done a series, hadn't won a series. Um, fortunately, I had that mindset that if I won it once, I was happy. I didn't have to go back and do multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, I never had that. Um, I, ne I never had that sort of mindset. But I certainly set my mind to winning the World Series in '96, and, and I set my mind to winning the Formula One Series in about 2000. And I managed to be able to do that successfully, good races. But um, oddly enough, those years weren't my best races at World Championships. So I did better at the overall, but wasn't so good on the one-off days. My skill set, or what I was more comfortable was, was. I had trouble focusing for long periods of time, um, still do, and I could give myself about 14 weeks to be really good, and I could I could lift the lifestyle very, very well for about 14 weeks without a break. So that was living like a monk, training properly, eating properly, sleep, you know, just living this lifestyle that I probably should have been leading the whole time. But after the 14 weeks, I'd go off, I'd have a really good race, and then I'd just need a break from it all. So I, I didn't have that ability to, to live and breathe the sport day in, day out, all year round like some people, which which just a different mindset probably. I, I was more one race, 14 weeks, get ready, go as hard as you can, success or failure, and then have a break and then pick another one to do. So I didn't really have the serial killer mindset for the series. I, I had the more get in there, shoot for a big race and then get out of there and have a rest again. So there was people who I was racing against who, like, like Brad, who just day in, day out, lived that lifestyle of the professional athlete, which... You know, everything they ate, everything they trained, every rest, not going out in the sun all day. They lived that life like a monk for, for non-stop. I just, I just couldn't do it.